All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Coach's Corner, the really the best part of the stream. There's all the retweets. Thanks a lot. Let's mute this phone. There we go. Uh, thanks a lot for for the retweets and the favorites and all that. So, well, but welcome to Coach's Corner. Today we'll be talking about raid leading, really raid leading, and you. Uh, I've got a number of questions from people through Twitter. I've got some on Facebook as well. We'll go through those at the end. Uh, but I'll be really going through uh, the big aspects of raid leading and. Um, and the responsibilities of it, you know, tips and, and things like that in different situations where uh, you may want to, you know, change the way you do things or adapt or, you know, try something new as well. Um, but Coach's Corner, I mean, it, it go, we go through everything here. We go through raid leading, we go through uh, recruitment, we go through, you know, analyzing logs, we look at applying to guilds. We've done it all uh, and we'll be doing a lot more throughout the weeks. Luckily, I have a day off today, so I was able to, you know, prep a really good Coach's Corner for you guys and it'll be fantastic, trust me. Uh, so, so you want to become a raid leader. Terrible idea. Uh, raid leading sucks, or I mean, it can be a lot of fun, but you, let's say you got promoted to a raid leader position in your guild, my condolences to you. Uh, at the same time, there's not enough people out there that want to raid lead or guild lead or be in those leadership positions. You know, they're happy being just a raider. They're happy being just that person that is, you know, doing their job, and that's it. Um, there's a lot of responsibility on that raid lead position. Thanks for subbing. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in that position, and you know it's a lot of stress and it's a lot of work. And it's you know it's work in a video game that you're not getting paid to play, right? But there's somebody that has to do it. Whether you're in sports or you know you play hockey, somebody's got to coach the team. Guess what? That coach isn't getting paid unless you're friggin' what's his face, uh, Mike Babcock. So getting paid lots of good money there um yeah i mean with a lot of you know casual sports you may not have a coach or you may have a you know a captain that has to deal with all those things uh when i play hockey you know we have a captain too i've captained some teams and you just get shit on right by your teammates and you gotta you know pay whenever the, the goalie doesn't show up so it's one of those positions where it, it sucks it sucks but it is really rewarding uh, it's necessary too now in terms of the expectations of a raid leader <coughs> you're there to lead the raid, essentially. I mean, you're there to help formulate the strats, so you should have, you know, a really good understanding of the encounters. Uh, in general, as a raid leader, and again, it does vary depending on guild to guild, uh, you're not there to make friends. I'm not there to, you know, wipe your bum and hold your hand. You're there to kill bosses, you know, whether you're in a normal guild or heroic guild or a mythic guild, you're there to kill bosses, number one. That is the most important thing. That's what you've been mandated to do, right? You think Mike Babcock is out there to make friends with Dion Phaneuf and, you know, all those other prima donnas? No! You're there to friggin' get some Stanley Cups, get some wins, right? That's what you're paid to do. You're there to bitch at them when they need bitching at, and you're there to motivate them when they need motivating. And obviously have your strats and plays in, in place for, for whatever you need to do. Uh, so sometimes you're going to hurt people's feelings. Sometimes you're going to, you know, step on people's toes, but you have to be confident in your decisions. You know, that's one question I get here in my stream often is, you know, what do I do in this situation? You know, what if I'm unsure? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Be confident in your decisions. Usually you will make the right ones. Sometimes you'll make the wrong decisions and that's okay. But we learn from them, right? Because we're humans. We learn from our mistakes. Better to make a decision on anything, you know, whether it be a strat or a player or swapping somebody in or out or having X amount of healers or a certain tank or a certain setup or whatever, than be plagued by indecision. Okay, indecision is just, you know, thinking about it and just wasting time. Make a decision, stick with it. Like, don't waste time. Time is valuable. Time is absolutely, absolutely valuable. Am I from Toronto? No, 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 no. Well, sort of, yeah. Uh, so in general, in my rate, like in my, uh, in my raids, whether it be the zeros to heroes or subs or, you know, the death, death, sorry, death jesters, mythic raids, we have multiple people doing everything. It's a streamlined operation. Um, if it's you as raid leader, you know, doing invites, doing, you know, wait list, doing loot, doing recruitment, doing everything, you know, wiping people's bums, it's a quick road to burnout make sure you delegate those responsibilities. So for example, in my own raids, I have a couple of people doing loot. You know, we have a loot council system, so they're uh, doing loot, I'm part of it as well. We have a person doing strats, so we have a couple of people doing strats and grade cooldowns. 
setting those things up. We have another person doing swaps and invites, and we all work as a team, a well-oiled war machine, to keep things going. Uh, if it's one person, the stresses are all on you. That's it's a quick way to get burnt out. So yes, time is money, friend. Exactly, time is money. So having that structure in place will help you out as a raid leader. You know, have other people do other things. Or if you're running an EPGP system or whatever other crap or bullshit, um, you know, you can use those things too. Thanks, Red Five, for every seven. Thanks a lot. Uh, so as a raid leader, again, you should know the encounters, right? You pull up your dungeon journal, but you should know these. You should know what Iron Reaver does. You should know what the tank is supposed to do for artillery strikes. As a raid leader, if you're not a tank, that's okay. But as a as a healer, I should know what artillery strike does, right? This thing, this tank ability. I should know what unstable orbs do and how to avoid getting multiple stacks, which is spreading out, right? Because this is eight yards here, so we know I'm eight yards spread, right? I should know how to avoid barrages and how to teach my raiders to avoid barrages as well. I teach you guys on stream how to avoid this ability, right? Be closer to the boss because it is a pie, right? Is It is a triangle, so how do you minimize distance? Well, by shifting in and to the side. Right? How do you maximize healing for pounding? So having cooldowns set up, you should know those things. You know, you should know your DPS priority. So, as a as a raid leader, for example, on something like Sokrathar, you should know what DPS priority is, which is your dominators first, the ones that are stopping Sokrathar from being interrupted and therefore DPS or you know him breaking the robot. Uh, you should know that depending on your strat, you know your ranged should be on the ghosts, right? Unless you plan on throwing them all of them into a prison. Um, or, you know, what DPS should be on the, the shadow callers, right? Who's interrupting them? Those are the kinds of things you should have set up as well. A lot of the, uh, the, if you do a lot of prep work, and this is, you know, in general, if you do a lot of prep work in your guild, in your raids, you will save a ton of time. Instead of formulating the strat and cooldowns and assigning things during the raid, when you should be attempting bosses and wiping and learning, have those things set up well in advance. It'll save you a buttload of time. And it'll save your raiders a buttload of time. Because then they'll be better prepared. They'll know exactly what to expect. So if I go into, you know... Um, give me another, another example here of a fight. Hellfire Assault. Okay, Hellfire Assault. Everybody in my Mythic Guild should know DPS priority. In every single situation. I will have groups already set up. Left side, right side, and they are already balanced. So when invites come, they know which side they're going to. They know what they're DPSing. All we do is just pull. Cooldown's already set up. It is simply down to execution. Right? Execute the boss well. And do well. Yes, barrage is avoidable. Yes. Completely avoidable. Trust me. Um, now, as a raid leader, you should inspect what you expect. You know, I tell you guys to lead by example. So... I really preach a lot of focus on mechanics, be in the right position, kill ads, then kill boss. Right? If you stay alive as a raider, you will 100% kill the boss. Right? You know, a lot of these things aren't big gear checks. If you're an average raider and you know how to match your buttons and you're decently geared, as long as you play by the rules and do the mechanics correctly, you will kill the boss. But if you die to really stupid shit, like standing in barrages or getting blitzed, or you know, standing in the immolations, or you know, not killing ads because you're too busy picking your nose and DPSing the wrong things to pad the meters because you're a dirty scumbag DPS and I hate you so much. Well, then you're not going to kill the boss. Your, I mean, your numbers will be fantastic on every single wipe. You will be the best patter on every single wipe every single time, and people hate you. People absolutely hate you. Again, mechanics number one. But do lead by example, uh, and you want to inspect what you expect. So if somebody asks me a question about an encounter, I should be expected to know it, right? Or if I don't know, it's okay. You don't have to know everything, right? There's raid leaders that are starting out as well. You don't have to know every single thing. Uh, what is the clump check, check on Mythic Archimond? Right, what is the clump check? Most of you guys have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. Excuse my French there. Um, but for those that are working on Mythic Archimond, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, for for some of the mechanics, for you know, Fel Hellfire High Council, right? There's a number of mechanics as well. You know, should you send all your DPS to kill the um, the mirror images, or do you want to wait it out? Well, why would you wait it out? Don't they last forever? No, they last for 45 seconds. Um, one thing you can do is you know test your raiders. You know, sometimes okay, okay, uh, you can ask so and so. So what's this ability? How are we going to counter it? Right? Make sure your raiders are up to speed as well. And this is from you know a respect standpoint as well. Um, if your raiders 
can't spend, you know, the 10 minutes to watch a couple videos to, you know, again, it, it depends on the type of guild you are. If you're a normal guild, you know, let's say my subs in Zeros to Heroes. Let's say it's you guys. Uh, my my subs are typically, you know, heroic raiders or mythic raiders, normal raiders. Uh, a lot of them are casuals too, uh, which is fine. My, my stream community guild Zeros to Heroes, they're a casual group as well, doing normals and heroics. The amount of prep work they do is different than the amount of prep work that I expect my Mythic Raiders to do. It's it's vastly different. My uh, my subs and zeros to heroes, I expect them to do you know dungeon journal stuff, watch some some guide vids, watch my coach's corners on how I explain each fight goes, and you know general strats for those. That's it. Like you spend 15 minutes on a fight, you're done. Like that's totally fine for normals and heroics. For Mythic, it's a lot more. Uh, but your expectations should be clear of your raiders. You know, this is what we want you to be de want you to do. So, for example, Yendar, uh, he'll lead my Zeros to Heroes raid sometimes when I'm not there, and you know, he's he's a good leader of that group. And as long as the expectations are clear, of what you should do. Okay, for next week, guys, uh, let's watch this video. So, Zeros to Heroes is currently 12 out of 13 uh, normal and 5 out of 13 heroic. So now they're now working on either normal Archimonde or Heroic Gore Fiend. And the expectations are clear from the raid leader. This is what we're doing next week. Make sure you prepare. Watch videos, you know, know the abilities, know how to counter them. That kind of stuff. Um, now, in terms of, you know, communication, communication is key for raiding. I mean, you should have a microphone. Uh, as a raid leader, you just can't be, you know, typing all phase four. Uh, you have to communicate well and communicate effectively. So whether it be communicating cooldowns or communicating to, to, to res somebody or stand in the right spot or the wrong spot or they're standing in the wrong spot to correct them, you have to communicate. Uh, one thing that, you know, that shouldn't happen in raids, and I know if you guys watch other streams as well, uh, you'll see, for example, and I, I don't mean to, to bash other guilds here, um, you know, Nylum, they're a fantastic guild, but they're sort of plagued with, and as far as I know, like, Kungan's not there, so they have a lot of, you know, chiefs in the kitchen or whatever, and there's a lot of people talking, right? If they had one vocal leader position, issue solved, right? Instead of bickering for, for a while, they'd have one person making the decisions, either the, the right ones or mistakes, and that's fine too, and... Um, and they would go from there, rather than, you know, 30 people talking over over each other. Let's go fly back down there. So, you know, have that one person talking, um, rather than, you know, 50 people talking. But communicate what's what's important. So whether it be uh, on Gorfiend, for example, we're working on Mythic Gorfiend, whether it be in essence spawning where it is, you know, that's important communication. Is it important to communicate that you're going down every single time, or there's a touch of doom? Not exactly. Um, one thing that, you know, that can be disruptive is, is a lot of backseat raid leaders. And I know here in Twitch chat, you guys are 14 out of 13 Mythic, and you're just, you know, like this, and you you all, like, you're all fantastic raiders, right? You've all cleared Mythic Archimonde, I know, because you're so awesome, and you like to talk a lot of shit, or a lot of suggestions, that kind of stuff, and I know. But in raids, too, you have a lot of backseat raid leaders, like, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do this. No, Sparty, you know, you should, you should probably, you know, think about doing this instead. There's a time and a place, you know, for communicating that kind of stuff and backseat ray leading um, really serves no purpose other than to disrupt the ray leaders and what they're trying to do, right? When you get stressed out, your cortisol levels arise and your capacity for logical thinking and problem solving, those things diminish by having people stress you out. This is a, you know, physical, it's, it's, it's how your brain works, right? It's how your body works. So by having, ideally, you know, a less stressed environment, it, it makes it a little bit easier for your raid leaders. Um, so you have people, you know, backseat raid leading, talking over you. You tell them to shut the fuck up. That's it. Okay, listen. Look at me. I'm the raid leader now. You, you raid. That's it. That's how you handle disruptions, backseat raid leader. Listen. Let's talk about this afterwards. Don't talk over me. I'm trying to say something important. That's it. How to handle backseat raid leaders. Tell them to shut the hell up. If they're still talking, I mean, you can mute them. De depending, like, if they don't respect you and they still keep talking, you can mute them. Right? Like, I, I don't have to mute any of my raiders. I would just tell them, listen, you're talking too much. Shut the fuck up. Slow down. Relax. Relax for a second. Um, so you don't want to have too many of those. Now, in terms of, you know, strat suggestions, uh, strat 
discussion, that kind of stuff, it can happen between polls. People can give you ideas. You know, as a raid leader, yeah, give me ideas. I'm only one brain. We have like 30 brains, right, between all my guild members. If you have suggestions, yeah, whisper them to me, or whisper an officer, or a raid leader, or something. But don't, like, say in the middle of a poll, hey, we should do this right now. No! I'm the raid leader, let me make the mistakes. It is up to you to entrust your raid leader to make those mistakes, and that's fine, because nobody's perfect, right? All you people standing in fire, you're not perfect. Uh, but let the raid leader make those mistakes, it's okay. Again, take charge, make the decisions, don't be plagued by indecision. You know, if you don't take a risk, you will not gain anything. But let your raid leaders do that. And if you have comments, or if you have suggestions for your raid leader, that's fine. Do them between pulls, or do them after the raid, right? In the middle of the raid, when you are in heated battle, is not the time for a lot of those things. Who cares if people get butt hurt? C. Sanders asks, well, you should care to an extent, right? You should care to an extent. Um, so, now in terms of, yeah, I talked about mythic and normal heroic raid leading expectations. You know, when I raid my mythic raiders, I have really high levels of expectation. Like, you've done this prep work and you've, you know, you've killed these bosses. I know exactly what you're capable of. And when I do my subs and my Zeros to Heroes raids, well, we've cleared normals and heroics and a lot of them are brand new to raiding and they've never done this kind of stuff before but they want to experience it and they want to kill the bosses and be part of a team right it's all a team environment and um, you know the expectations are a little bit lower for those guys so if my raiders screw up like a really simple mechanic or you know over and over and over I'll get annoyed but if my normal raiders, my serious to heroes, my subs, if they make mistakes, it's okay. They're still learning, right? You see the expectation. There's a there's a big paradigm shift in terms of expectations. The normal raiders, my subs and serious to heroes, they're still learning to raid. They're still learning the the basics, the intricacies of raiding. I'm encouraging them to communicate more. You know, to to mark up targets as tanks, to to watch position, to you know use cooldowns appropriately, that kind of stuff. Whereas my mythic raiders, they should know these basic things, right? And you know when they fall below that, it's, you know, you get something up your bum. Sometimes it's a foot. Sometimes. Uh, and yeah, Laura makes a you know good point there. You know, there's been more than a few failed apps in my guild from verbal diarrhea, from just non-stop talking, non-stop, just, just no. Just no. That's okay. That being said, though, I've led my guild with a decent amount of success for over 10 years. Um, my way works for my style of raid leading and, and my kind of players. It may not work for everybody, like it, it's not effective for everybody, so the raid leading style does have to change. You know, when I teach courses, for example, and I work in um, lifeguarding and teaching kids and teaching teens and adults, you know, that's a different type of style as well. Similar to what I do here in the stream, my, my teaching style is almost identical to my stream coach's corner style, almost exactly. A lot of hand talking, a lot of gestures, you know, sometimes F-bombs to accentuate my points. Uh, becoming a great writer is a lot longer of a task than people realize. That's very true, like, they're all learned skills. Rate awareness, situational awareness, those are all learned skills that you, you learn over time. Uh, good, so again, adjust your rating styles. Uh, what are the questions that I have here? Uh, do I have to catch up on any questions? What if my raid leader has a short fuse and can't keep his composure for more than five wipes? You know, I, I've had some of my officers tell me, uh, you know, this one statement where, you know, a member will go to them because uh, this member or an app is comfortable talking to this office and they're like, you know, I, I really get annoyed when Sparty yells at me for, you know, f for, for stuff. And, and, you know, what do you get yelled at? Well, when I'm standing in fire or when I do lack of prep or when I fuck up. Oh, so Sparty's yelling at you for fucking up? Stop fucking up. Like, get your shit together. Um, that being said, though, like, you know, there's a time and a place. If we're, for example, if we're learning Mythic Gorefiend, it is a learning, right? We are learning the first 50 attempts, first 100 attempts. We are learning. As long as we're progressing, we are learning from each other. If it's a farm fight and we've done it 50 times, you know, we've killed the boss 50 times, and you're still not getting things, right? That's when the raid leader should be annoyed. You know, again, that's my opinion. If you have done um, a lot of, you know, 
if I've killed a boss X amount of times on normal, heroic, LFR, and you know the mechanics, and you just, you know, you forget, or you become lazy or complacent or stop giving a shit, that's when the raid leader, you know, I think should go to town on you because you need some fire under your ass. Don't talk about Gorfin the Horror. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Shell, so I can ask your, answer your question later. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, so, motivation. We'll talk about some, some ways to motivate, uh, some criticizing and demeaning. Okay, so, motivation. Motivation is simple. Well, I, I heard one saying from a former officer from another top guild. Uh, you, you know, you try to motivate people and you do your best and there's different ways to motivate people, right? Uh, whether it be a lot of positive reinforcement, which is fantastic and it's got its time and place, or uh, redirecting you know, their mistakes and improving on them. But if people are just not motivated, and that's a question I get here on stream often too, you know, my players are just not motivated and I've tried to motivate them to become better and I've given them resources, I've given them your stream and, you know, all these forum threads and I've given them websites and I see veins and Summonstone when that was around and, you know, wowhead guides and they just don't improve, they just don't care. If people, you know, are not motivated to do well, and, you know, that's a general life thing. If they're not motivated to do well, and the rest of your team is, the best way to motivate people is replace the unmotivated. Right? I, I know that sounds sort of like cut and dry and a bit of an asshole response, but if people are not motivated, replace the unmotivated. That being said, though, the better choice is to try to motivate them. Right? Whether it be like, you know, a pat on the back, and that's something I'm guilty of as well. Like, I need to give my guys more pats on the back. Like the Zeros to Heroes guys, you know, you guys filled up the bank, like to the brim. You guys did a fantastic job um, filling our guild bank, right? Because we were getting short. I, I mentioned last night that, you know, guild bank's getting low. You guys should start restocking because it's just not going to, you know, carry the guild bank forever. Uh, or some of my DPSers, right? Like, you know, you guys all praise Schomburg. Um, he does a fantastic job DPSing, and he's great mechanically, and I give him those tough jobs because I trust him, right? And, you know, he needs more pats on the back, despite him, like, ranking world first and a lot of, you know, fights. And, you know, that's to be sort of expected of him now because he's such a damn good player. But, you know, those kind of players also do need a pat on the back, you know, more often. Um, and, you know, for your raid leaders, you know, that's something you don't realize. Give them more pats on the back. Give them more positive reinforcement when they do a really good job, and they will continue to do that. Uh, that being said, you know, you, you look at progress, you know, you look at, um, you know, your wiping. I mean, every, and I had a whole blog about this, you know, months ago, every guild has bad raid nights, every single guild. Tiger Woods had had a lot of bad raid nights, right? The Maple Leafs had you know, 40 plus years of bad raid nights. You know, everybody has them, some more than others, um, but you have to recover from those nights. You know, you, you wipe them off, you, like, you, you dust them off, you shake them off and you, you move on to the next night, right? You, you take what you've learned from that previous night and go to the next one. Um, you know, each 1%, so we're working on Mythic Gorfing right now. Each 1%, each little improvement is progress. That's what you want to see. When you as a raid leader are wiping, as long as you're seeing constant improvement, that is fantastic. It does not matter if it takes you 500 wipes to kill something. Some bosses will take 500 wipes, right? As long as you're seeing constant, constant improvement, that is good. That being said, though, people will make mistakes, and depending on you know your style of raid leading and you know where your guild is, uh, for example, my my mythic style of raid leading would not like serve any purpose, would not do well with my subs, my casual groups at all. I would make people cry, I'm sure, and they would never come back to my stream ever again. Uh, had I used you know the 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 mythic style of raid leading uh, with those guys, now. In terms of, you know, criticizing and demeaning, you know, there's a difference, you know, and I've got a couple of questions uh, that people ask me uh, about criticizing players. Um, and you know, this goes back to communication as well. So if I say, let me pick up somebody here. If I say, who do I have? Zeremir. If I say, Zeremir, stop standing, you're standing in fire right now. That's criticism. You know, that's me telling her to move, right? That's communicating in a raid on Mumble or Raid Call or, or TeamSpeak, whatever you, you know, you kids do communicating her, listen, I know you're not paying attention, but I'm paying attention to you. Like, I see all of you. I see every one of you standing, what you're doing. You're standing in fire right now. Okay, so Zeremy, move out. Or if I say, you know, move the boss a different way, then the tank should move the boss a different way, right? It's up to the raid leader to make those decisions. Um, you know, I, okay, this is story time, really quick here, quick little anecdote. I, uh, 
I had, this is back about 10 years ago, I'm doing Upper Black Rock Spire with my guild, but, you know, 15, 20 people back when it was sort of current, and, um, and I have this one tank, we're doing Upper Black Rock Spire, we're doing a Rend Black Hand, and Rend flies in with his Drake, and, you know, he's, we've done the whole event, and I, and the tank, and this is Tanking 101, he's tanking the Drake towards the raid, right, towards the raid, and what the Drake does is he does a big poison breath, and so I say, okay, you know, so and so, move, turn the boss around. Doesn't do anything. Turn the boss around. Are you disconnected? Doesn't say anything. Can you friggin' turn the boss around? It's breathing on the raid. I told him three times. And he comes back at me and says, I don't have to fucking listen to you. I was in the goddamn Marines or Vietnam or something. And he's like, I don't have to listen to some little shit. I'm like, listen. I'm not asking you to fuck a goat or permission to fuck your sister. I just need you to turn the boss around so we don't all die. Like, it's not a, a difficult request. Right? That is where, you know, I just need you to turn the boss around. Right? Just, just do something very simple. Otherwise, you can do whatever you want, but not in my guild. Needless to say, that tank did not work out very well. And no, that guy was not Tally. Um, so, communicate where, you know, where it's appropriate. Um, if there's too much communication, that can also get droned out. So, I see a lot of my players doing really good things. Like, I see, you know, my hunters disengaging really well. Or, you know, he, when we had Valkyrith around on his Shadow Priest, he would be instant with, uh, when we did Paragons of the Klaxi, with his uh, Spectral Geysis, or we'd have, you know, some great healers. And I would think, or I'd say out loud here in my stream, right? Or tell Tadriaz when she's sitting next to me, you know, that was a really good move, so and so. Sometimes I'm able to repeat it, but if I had to call out every single good move my raiders did, I would not have enough time to communicate anything else. Right? I, I would not have enough time at all. Like, sometimes I'll say, you know, that was a really good move, or that was really smart of you to do, so everybody else learns from that. So, for example, um, you know, if Firemance, one of our mages, is in a really good spot, and it's a blue moon, uh, I will tell him, you know, that was a really good spot, that was a really good thing you did, so the rest of my raid learns from that. When you make a mistake or you do something well, the entire raid should learn from that as well. Now, in terms of criticizing, you know, and demeaning, demeaning really has no real place, right? Like, if I were to go to... Clipper here, you know, Clipper, or Clipper, LOL, he's like some midwinter hunter, he plays survival or some shit, I don't know. Um, but, but if I went to Clipper here in stream chat and said, Clipper, what the hell are you doing? You're a worthless hunter. Like, really, your pet should be doing, you know, your, your pet is smarter than you, and your pet's a fucking squirrel. How do you manage to play a hunter, let alone, you know, turn on your fucking computer? You dumb piece of crap DPS. Like, really? You should go back to doing Alafara, you dirty, like, why? 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 Why, why, Clipper? Why? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, you're a piece of shit. That's demeaning, right? That is absolutely demeaning. Clipper's an awesome guy. I, like, I, I would... Clipper, we're having beers at BlizzCon. Clipper's an awesome dude. Uh, he's a great player, right? But as an example, you know, that's demeaning. There's no point to that. Like, why the fuck do I... Like, why should you as a raid leader be a bully, right? That's demeaning. What did Clipper learn? Clipper learned, you know, that when he stands in the fire, you know, Sparty's gonna bitch at him and, like, tear him a new asshole, but, like, what? Why? Is there not a better way to get that across? Clipper learned that his squirrel pet has more brain cells than Clipper, right? That, like, I mean, is there any point to that? I mean, yeah, people may make it funny, and, but no, like, the, there's a better way to get that across. So, Clipper, instead of standing in fire, you know, and being dumber than your squirrel pet, maybe we should get you a weak aura, right? Like, what are you using Clipper right now uh, for when you're standing in shit? You know, do you have tell me when? Do you have, you know, weak, like DBM yelling at you? What do you have, right? What can we do to fix you, right? Clipper, you're, you're totally fixable. There's something, fi like, we can totally fix you. How can we, you know, make it so you don't stand in fire so quickly or so, so much? Um, you know, better weak auras, better DBM warnings, you know, more vocal shouts. Uh, or if I ask Clipper, you know, Clipper, why are you doing so low DPS? As a mythic raid leader, and, and you know, as a mythic player, he should know. He should know exactly, you know, why he's doing low DPS. You know why? It's because he didn't have his pet out. That damn squirrel pet. That damn squirrel pet is a fucking rabid pet, and it does so much damage. He forgot to bring it out because he was jealous of his, of his brain cells. That's, that's why, right? Um, if we, you know, if we look at, you know, 
what spec is using or, or criticizing something like, so why aren't you using this spec clipper? Why are you using, I don't know, this spec over Lone Wolf, right? You know, he should have a good answer as a mythic raider. Um, if, if I were to ask, you know, some of my subs and viewers, you know, why is your DPS so low? They may have no clue. They may have no idea. Maybe they're the wrong spec. Maybe they're using the wrong rotation. Maybe they're not mashing the crap out of their buttons, which is what you DPS should be doing, right? It could be, you know, you're just not mashing the crap out of your buttons. And therefore, there's a long delay. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that you as a raid leader, depend again, depending if you're a normal heroic mythic raid leader, should go through with your raiders. With my mythic raiders, like, I, I can't be doing that kind of stuff because I need to trust them to do it for themselves. Whereas, if I were to go with... Um, Fifty dollars. Nobody wants. Uh, if I were to go with, you know, who can I? Who's in zeros to heroes right now? Who can I pick on? If I were to go with uh, Ashtanga here, you know, Ashtanga, why is your healing so low? Well, we could go through his up times. Maybe he's not uplifting enough. Maybe he's not using revival at all. And we would talk and like, you know, these are. This is the breakdown of um, a monk that normally does this. Thanks for subbing uh, Jango Rage. Um, you know, this is the, the proper monk breakdown. You're not using this spell enough, or you're not, you know, you're not throwing up enough renewing mists, um, or you're not using your, you know, your monk trinkets or whatever, you know, to the best of your ability or whatever, right? That's when you as a raid leader can take the time. And again, this is one of those jobs where you have to take the time aside to go with, you know, talk to your members and see what they're doing right or wrong, right? You know, have a quick chat with them. What is three minutes gonna cost you as a raid leader? Please don't compare me to DJ Hunters. They will get jealous. Sounds good, Clipper. Sounds good. Sounds good. Anyway, um, so criticizing, demeaning, different, you know, different things. Criticize them. Criticize them, yes, absolutely, as a raid leader. That being said, though, don't ask them, you know, why the hell do they keep dying when you yourself keep dying to all those abilities. I would not be in any place to criticize my own raiders if I was failing to the mechanics over and over and over and over, right? They'd be like, who's this goddamn bozo? He's standing in fire worse than these guys, and he's yelling at them? You know, that's just really silly. Uh, and then people will not respect that and obviously not follow you and, and listen to you as a raid leader. So, criticize, criticize. Now, one of the questions that does come up is, well, what do I do about my raiders that can't handle criticism? What do you mean you can't handle criticism? Like, you're not asking them, you know, you're not telling them they're ugly. Or they have a big nose, or you know, that their transmog looks ugly. You're just telling them, like, hey, you know, we need to pick up your DPS. Your DPS is really low. What do you mean my DPS is low? I was in the Marines. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I paid $15 a month. Yeah, but we're here to be part of a team, right? This is a team game, not a, you know, you are in the Marines and you can do whatever the hell you want kind of game. I mean, you can, but when we're part of a team, your job is this. Everybody in your raid has a specific role, whether it be, you know, you're playing goalie, or you're playing forward, you're playing defense, right? Sometimes you will top the meters, sometimes you will not. For example, Mythic uh, Killrog, with the way my guild does it, we have, like, we just have a lot of Paladins. So we cast Blessing Protection on all the Heart Seekers, which means my healers will never rank in a million years. If you don't get sent down in Killrog into the Visions phase, you will never rank. Just, just forget about it. Okay, just forget about it completely. But focus on mechanics. Focus on you know killing the right ads because that's what a raid leader should be looking at, right? Rather than just ranks, right? I mean, it's nice that Schomburg ranks on all the bosses. However, mechanics are more important, and I know he does mechanics correctly. So, and band, fantastic. Because uh, entry to watcher, yeah, exactly, Vegas, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, again. Criticism has its place. Um, I mean, you don't want to be criticizing mid raid, right? Like, you know, you're doing a fight, you're doing Iron Reaver, and somebody's DPS is really low. Like, you don't want to go mid fight and say so and so, your DPS is really low, or Vegas Flash, your your DPS is really low. Why? Why is it so low? Well, we're trying to do a boss fight right now. You're distracting everybody else as a raid leader with your nonstop bullshit, nonstop talking, right? So. Anyway, that's criticizing. Uh, now, people... No, that's what I was meant to say. People that can't handle criticism well, you're part of a team, and this is why I ask, you know, a lot of my raiders if they've played team sports. If you've been part of team sports, you would have succeeded and you would have failed together as a team. I want people that have failed, have done 
I've been on poor teams. Because then you'll know what it's like to wipe many times. I don't want somebody that is, you know, all-star, triple-A, hockey player, and all they've done is win. Because what happens when they lose? What happens when they have a really bad raid night? Right? That's a completely foreign concept to them. Or those of you that are parents. Okay? Those of you that are parents here. And this is happening to a lot of you kids watching as well. Your parents, you know, bless their hearts, are just dumbasses. Okay? They, I mean, they have you, and any time there are obstacles in your way, you goddamn little millennials, they will snowplow all those obstacles out of your way to give you, you, you know, your unique snowflake life, the path of least resistance. So you will never deal with any challenges, or obstacles, or failure, or making mistakes, because your parents made it so damn easy. Screw your parents, they're wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Let your friggin' kids fail. They need to taste failure. You think friggin' Bill Gates, like the, the top entrepreneurs in the world, made it through just non-stop success? No, they made plenty of mistakes. You talk to any CEO, anybody that's successful with anything. You think Towley made it, you know, so, so uh, well, just on his own, just succeeding? No, he made plenty of mistakes on the way, tons of learning. You have to learn and get your kids to learn their goddamn critical thinking skills. So, when they're part of a team, when somebody criticizes them and says, Hey, you know, you're not pulling your weight here. What do you mean you're not pulling my weight? I'm going to call my parents. No! Like, you need to have a bit of a thicker skin. And now if players can't have that... Bill Gates still is pretty smart. If players can't have that thicker skin, it's not, you know, it's like a, you know, a redneck crazy thick skin where you're demeaning each other it's a thick enough skin where if somebody in stream chat tells me sparty i think you're healing incorrectly because you should do this this and this maybe it might make you a little bit more efficient that's fine i welcome criticism right that's totally fine like i i, I welcome the criticism you know i've got some really good paladins that watch this stream and i learn from them you know kuru is a great one here He's from Europe. I've got Dell. Dell's a fantastic paladin. Learn from them. I've learned from Shuttle and Aladdie and some of the best paladins. They criticize me, and how else are you going to improve, right? It's non-stop improvement in life, right? You feel called out. Uh, they criticize me, and like I take no offense. I take zero offense to them. You know what? I've done more progress than Kuru, but I know he's a good paladin, so I welcome his criticism. It's not as if, you know, well, I'm a 5 out of 13 Mythic Raider. I have to listen to your bullshit. No! Right, like, how else do you improve as players? You know, whether it be a different raid leader, right? If you, as raid leaders, criticize them effectively, then good. You know, try this instead, right? When you're criticizing them, why don't you try this talent instead? Or try using this guide? That's good improvement. If you're going to demean them, like I demean the shit out of the Clipper, well, they won't learn anything. They just, you know, they won't have fun. They won't show up to your raid at all. So, that's the thing. Like, you have to be able to take criticism. At the same time, um, you know, give the right criticism. Now, for people that are, oh, I guess I can fly here. Oh, what a surprise. Um, now, for people that can't take the criticism, well, you hope they can adapt to have a bit of a thicker skin. It could be a maturity issue. It could be an age issue. It could be, you know, they're a big butthurt issue. I, I don't know, right? Um, you know, you have to be able to, to take that criticism. And if they don't, well, maybe it's time to part ways because they will then not improve or choose not to improve. So, right, you know, there's the right kind and the wrong kind. Sparty, you can't learn from your mistakes. If people don't tell you, take it as a helping hand, not a pointing finger. Exactly! That's 100% right, Nikki. It's a helping hand. Right, people are trying to help out. Like, we have a lot of really good players in our Twitch chat, a lot of good people, right? The trolls get banned like that. Dumbass Tard, I don't know what his name was. I keep forgot his name already, see. Um yeah, like the trolls just get banned, right? You're not here for giveaways or anything else. Good. You contribute nothing. So anyway. Is there to hear some Lingel? No, it's skill for everybody. You're all the more than welcome to join, like Midget said there. Um So, that's one. No, I had another question here, and this is, you know, getting to the end point of it. How can you tell people to stop fucking up? That was a question I I uh I had on Twitter here. You tell them to stop fucking up. How do you tell them? What do you mean, how do you tell them? You just tell them, stop fucking up. Right? Is that helpful? Yes and no. It's it's both helpful and not helpful at the same time, right? Give me a sec, guys. I'll answer your questions in a bit here, uh, if you can repeat them. Um, 
if you tell them to stop fucking up, yeah, well, like, they should know, right? So when I ask, so here's as a raid leader what I do. As a raid leader, I ask somebody, you know, why did you die? And before I even ask this question, I know exactly why they died. I know how they died. I know what they were doing. I know exactly why they died. But the reason I ask this question is so they know. Some people don't know why they died. And you as a raid leader should foster that so they learn. They take their critical thinking skills and they learn as to why they died, why they made that mistake. And again, you will make plenty of mistakes. How many mistakes did Method make before killing Archimonde? 406, 475, right? That's a lot of mistakes, a lot of attempts, many hours and days, weeks trying to kill that boss. Long, long time. What was I saying? Oh, I'll have to stop looking fucking up. Uh, so, give them the right kind of criticism. Now, if I ask, and I asked this question, you know, a couple weeks ago or a week ago, you know, I asked one player, what killed you? Sparty, the damage killed me. The damage. Jesus Christ, are we all in kindergarten? The damage killed you. I know the damage killed you. I know. What damage killed you? What were you doing? Right? I know that you were, you know, either picking your nose or not paying attention or, or whatever. I, I know you were, but I need you to realize, hey, you were out of position, right? Like, when I ask you why you died, you're out of position. Done. Conversation's over. I'm not going to be prodding you. Like, I know that you know as a player what you did. You were just out of position, that's all. Okay, you made a mistake, big deal. Guess what, you're not perfect, you're human. Big effing deal. Right? That's fine. Lack of heals, I swear to God, lack of heals. It's the worst one. Anyway, healers didn't heal you enough. Those are just terrible reasons, no. There's always a domino effect, right? You know, when somebody dies, they make the fight a lot more difficult for everybody else. When your healer dies, well now there's less, you know, healing going around to make up for, you know, mistakes or whatever. Or if somebody dies because they were standing in things, again, it makes the fight a lot more difficult. Uh, so, again, give that criticism directly, intelligently, give them the right, you know, how to tell them to stop fucking up. Just tell them, right? Like, hey, you're standing in too much fire. I, this is what I need you to do. Maybe my expectations weren't clear. I need you to not stand in fire. Fire hurts. Right? Because you're deciding to keep DPSing, keep throwing those hunter chimera shots while standing in the fire, I'm having to heal you instead of the tank. And now I'm, I'm low on mana. And now the tank died and we wipe. Because you decided it was more important to continue DPSing instead of standing out of the fire and take two steps. So sometimes you do make it, make it clear to those guys um, you know, that this is why it happened, right? They may not know. So do educate your raiders as to why they died if, if they're not sure. It's totally okay. Totally okay. Sparty, let me die. Your health went to zero. Also terrible, terrible reasons. Um, need a personal healer. Yes, a pocket cleric. The biggest question of them all, how do you handle a raid leader GM being nice to a raider because the raider's a girl and they're all, all nice in a relationship? Now, see, that's a tough one. To yours, uh, that is a very, very tough one. And I'll, I'll uh, answer this one uh, very personally. Give me a sec here. Oh, I have a couple of questions. Okay, give, let me get back to that one. Let me... Uh, Okay, good one. Okay, so a couple questions here from you guys uh, from Flak Attack. He says, I'm a regular raider. Yeah, you can bring that one back, Midgets. I'm a regular raider, knowing the leaders uh, are doing something wrong or using a bad strategy. How should I approach that? That is a great question. Your raid leaders should not be above criticism. I am not above criticism. I am not. If you think they're doing something incorrectly or you've seen another guild do it right, tell them after the raid or between attempts if you have suggestions. Okay? Uh, use your forums, talk to them before or after the raid, whatever you can. But one thing I would suggest, have videos to back it up. Have logs to back it up. This is what another guild did. Our way isn't effective. Or if you have ideas, let them know. Criticize them. It's okay to criticize your raid leaders, guys. It is 100% okay. If your raid leader or guild leader kicks you out of the guild because you criticize them or ask them a question or want to clarify something, fuck them. They are not worth your time. 100% not worth your time. But yeah, approach them. Like it might not be the best like during a boss fight, like we should try a different strat now. No, like that's okay. Let's wipe on this, let's learn from our mistakes, then try something new. Right? A lot of the successes my guild has made was because people have suggested things, right, that I didn't think of. It's totally okay. Good, that's a question done. Uh next one here. 
one thing I immediately love about Safari style is that when he dies and it's his fault, he immediately says exactly what he did wrong and why he died. Living up to your own standards is important. That's, I mean, that's true though. But I, and I, and I, you guys see me make mistakes, right? Like you see me stand and fire sometimes, or make a wrong positional move, or make my rotation. Like I, I screwed up my rotation. I used, you know, a slow holy radiance instead of a, I don't know, something else. And I call myself out it right away because I know exactly I've made that mistake. And I want you guys to see and be aware that I made that mistake. Watch out for it. Don't repeat my mistakes. But yeah, you have to call yourself out for it, right? Or like, when I wipe the raid, I'll say, yeah, no, that was my fault. You know, so-and-so happened. I was tunneling, or I didn't do enough healing. It was his healer's fault. Yeah, it's totally fine to make mistakes. Okay, so that's question good. Uh, problem with So this is from Dreaded19. Problem with my guild is that our high DPS are terrible at mechanics because they're a scumbag in the meters, but the raid leader won't drop them. Makes me fume. God, those scumbaggers. Damn it! I've had a number of scumbag DPS in my guild over the years that I've had to drop um, that were like amazing DPSers, but for the life of me, they were just selfish. They're like, I want ranks! My ranks, you know, give me more EP. My EP means I make more girls, like I have more girls, right? That's not the way the world works, guys. That is, that is not the way the world works. Maybe like my world, but not the general world. No. Um, you gotta talk to your raid leader, right? Like if you have that kind of issue, Talk to your raid leader, um, and your raid leader really needs to re-emphasize to those guys that, listen, mechanics number one, nobody gives a shit about your scumbagging DPS. Nobody cares at all. Okay, nobody cares about your ranks. We are not killing this boss fight because we are not killing ads. Because we're not doing interrupts, right? And that's something you have to preach and preach and preach. And even the top guilds in the world, and I, I do attest to this, you know, a lot of you guys here in, in stream chat are, you know, top 30, top 50 uh, players, you have the same issues with DPS that these guys are having. You know, DPS is tunneling, they're picking their nose, they're, you know, they're picking lint out of their butt, they're not interrupting, they're, like, it's the same issues, guys. It is the exact same from, you know, a US 30 standpoint to a US 5000 standpoint, in varying degrees, but the same things do happen. Uh, question here from Rolex, my current co-tank never plays... That sucks. Except for Raid Knights, so her gear is basically not approving at all. The guild is in the small and most and most of them are close friends family. How can I go about talking to my a GM Raid Leader about their, because she's holding us back? Uh, exactly like that. Rolex, exactly like that. Like, when I read these questions out loud, some of them seem really silly. Because how do I talk to... Well, just talk to them. Hey, listen. Like, you would talk to me, Rolex. Talk to your GM and say, hey, our, you know, our current girl co-tank, she doesn't have the gear. She's not putting in the effort, right? She's holding the guild back. I think you, Sparty, as the guild leader, should talk to, you know, the the co-tank and see what's up. You know, maybe she doesn't have the time. Maybe she's, you know, breastfeeding four kids at once. I don't know what her deal is, right? Maybe she doesn't like the game. Maybe all she cares about is raids and that, and she's a raid logger, right? Have the GM talk to her and, uh, you know, see what they can do. Because maybe, you know, you're not the most eloquent person. Right? And that's okay. It's totally okay. Maybe you're shy to talk to people. That's okay too. Maybe you get anxiety. That's okay too. It doesn't matter. Talk to your GM. They're not going to kick you out of the guild for bringing up an issue. That's what their job is. Their job is to deal with these issues. Uh, so just talk to them and see, you know, what can we do? Maybe maybe the guild can pull together, get her some crafted gear. I don't know. There's a lot of suggestions that you can do. Um, you know, and maybe you guys can talk after the raid. You know, hey, can you stick around? Let's do some of the dungeons together. Right? Everybody's pulling their own weight. Worst case, you do re replace that person because they're, you know, what you guys are expecting as a guild Rolex and what the person is doing is vastly different. Uh, Fatsuno says here, being able to accept and take criticism is number one important skill in any team thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, I play hockey. I'm the worst goddamn player. Like, I I'm the absolute worst. I only started playing hockey a few years ago. I haven't played in a couple years, but... I, I was the worst, but I was the most improved every single year because I would watch my guys and I would tell them, you know, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me, what, you know, what I, I should have done there better. You know, instead of chasing the puck, go to where the puck is going to be. Right? That kind of stuff. Uh, Necrodia says, Sparty, if I'm not the raid leader, but I see someone doing something wrong, is it okay to call them out or tell the raid leader what they're doing wrong? Uh, in that case, I would really suggest you talk to the raid leader. It's the raid leader's job to call people out. It's not yours. If everybody is calling everybody out, you're going to have, you know, 50 people yelling at each other. And it will not be a good team environment. Like, if, if you see people doing something wrong and the raid leader missed it, that's fine. Raid leader misses a couple of things. Let them know. Like, hey, um, here's an example. Uh, you know, we had one hunter... 
and he crafted himself leather boots instead of male boots. So we called him Brokeback, because he's got these leather cowboy boots on. He did something wrong there, right? But is it the job of, you know, a Loria here, or, you know, some like, like Brewman food to call out every raider? No, it's not. It's not. Let the raid leader handle it. Um, you know, we have a good cop and a bad cop. I'm typically, you know, the bad cop, because I don't mind yelling at people. I, I don't care, right? Um, so, yeah, I think it's the raid leader's responsibility to call people out. Okay, uh, I've got more questions here. One sec, guys. Okay, uh, Rastoop has a question. As a raid leader, I lost a significant number of players over the summer, and now they're only 45 motivated to raid. The GM isn't really interested, but I really like the people in the guild. What should I do? We have to rely on a pre-made to hopefully get a raid together. You could recruit more players. That is one option. Right? That is one option. Uh, you could potentially merge with another group. It, mergers don't often work out well, um, so I don't recommend them at all. Rastoop. Um, I mean, recruit, if the GM's not interested, maybe you should take on that leadership mantle. I mean, it, you've already, you're already here asking questions, right? Why not? So, that's what you should do. Uh, what was it? That's why now it takes 20 minute breaks, because everyone's yelling at each other. They don't have, they, they need to have a raid leader. They have, need to have Trekkie or somebody just calling the shots, and that's it. Uh, there's another here from Calix. I just whisper the person about it. There's plenty of times where I've been messaged. It also depends on what it is, right? Like, if it's... Here's an example. Um, if... Who's on the line right now? If... If Galvin... If Galvin is using his fishing hat, should the raid leaders call out loud, Hey, Galvin, you're using your fishing hat! No, it's okay to whisper Galvin and say, Hey, man, you got your fishing hat on. Just, just make sure you, you know... And that's all. That's it. Conversation's over. He's like, Oh, yeah, thanks, man. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. Done! You just, you've just you solved the problem. You've made your raid better as a raider. That's fine. And you didn't bother your raid leader about it, right? Um, yeah, like that's another good one, too. So. Omaha Fishing Cat. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, I had another good question here. Now, this one is from Tijoris. Okay, now this is Tijoris' question. The biggest question of them all, and this is a, a, a long one, how do you handle a raid leader GM being nice to a raider because the raider is a girl and they are in a you know in a, a nice relationship? Or like I don't know what you mean by a nice relationship. Um, I don't know whether they're dating or whether you know they're just the raid leader is being nice to them because they're a girl. Listen, okay. And here's a couple secrets about raid leading uh, that I've learned over the years. I don't give two fucks what you think. Like I, I don't give a shit. Part of me does not care at all, right? Like I, you know, I'm a handsome dude, right? Like I get ladies everywhere I want. Kidding. Um, you know, I've had plenty of female raid leaders. We haven't or raiders. We haven't had that issue. I, I've called out plenty of girls. I've called out Loria. I've called out Bran. Like I've called them out. I've called out Driaz. I've called out. Uh, I don't know who else we've had. We had Kira. We've had. Like we've had a ton of female raiders. You know. And that's fine. Like female raiders are can be good raiders too. Like anybody else, they're regular human beings. There's no difference. No difference between male or female. I, like I, I, I discriminate zero. I don't care if you're a white, black, Asian, green, friggin' Tauli, Cuban. You know, I, I don't care if you're a guy, girl. I'm gonna call you out as I see it. That's it, right? I don't give a shit. And as a raid leader, you can't be bothered by caring what people think, right? Not at this level. I don't give a shit what you think right now. This is the way we're going to do it. And if it's wrong, that burden is entirely on me. Completely, completely on me. Now, quick little aside here. Um, one of the toughest things for me to do is raid lead with Drias. It is extremely difficult. And I mean, it's, it's very taxing on our relationship too. I know she's not here, which is good because I can talk about her. Um, she's an officer in the guild. You know, we're engaged. Um, but at the same time... I'm the guild leader, I'm the raid leader, and I stream it too. Which makes things a hundred times fucking harder. Right? Like it's it's different than when, you know, Bajira and Warcraft Gen stream. They're not part of any fucking team, right? Here I've got a guild, a well respected guild that has been around for ten plus years. It's got integrity to it. How much should my raiders ex you know respect me if I'm giving somebody preferential treatment, right? If I'm if I'm not calling out Driaz for her mistakes, or if I'm not ca calling out Aloria because she's a girl, or if I'm not calling out, you know, Marksman because he's 15, right? Like, how 
How much are they to respect me? It's the integrity of, you know, the guild and the stream. That is important. So, you know, as an officer, I expect a lot from Driaz. I expect more from, you know, the average DJ raider. And at the same time, it's very taxing on us, right? Because we get into arguments or, you know, or, over that kind of stuff. And it is very, very difficult. It is one of the toughest things to do, right? And, you know, one thing that the DJ girls do have, like Aloria says here, they have a girl channel where they just, you know, get to bitch about me all they want. I, I, that is the one channel I don't know that the name of that exists in, um, you know, in the guild. So, would I sit her for multiple fails? 100%. I've sat her. Like, this, this expansion, guys, I've sat Driaz for either underperforming or because she wasn't right for the composition. The thing is, though, she's an officer. She will sit herself. If she says, you know, hey, you know what, I'm, this is not my night, I'm doing really poorly, like on Hans and Franz, um, or it was another boss which was really bad at, Tectus, I think, she's sitting out, that's fine. I've sat out on bosses too, it's totally okay. Totally okay. Anyway, it is very tough. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, and it's tough. Like She respects that too, like Nikki says here, but as a raid leader, it is a very tough line to, to tread, right? Because... As a raid leader, you're there to get kill bosses. As a guild leader, you're there to make sure the guild succeeds. And you know, as you know, as a partner, I'm there to you know, to be her teammate, right? So, and when I say like she's busy looking at wedding stuff, it's all a joke. Anyway, I mean, she's looking at logs. Uh, so, it's a thought, tough one if you're a raider and a very niche question address later, Jim. Yeah, and here's the thing though, like a lot of and back to your original question, Tijoris. A lot of raiders or a lot of guys or girls would get sort of stuck in that. Like, it's a girl, you know, she's got boobs, you know, I've never touched boobs in my life. Um, you know, maybe she'll let me touch her, you know, virtual boobs or send me a picture if I'm really nice to her. That's not the way, you know, things happen, no. Um, I, I think you should treat everybody equally, uh, regardless of, you know, of whatever else. Uh, if you sit on fights, do you have a designated person to lead during that fight? Yeah, we have Bran or Drias, which are both girls, right? Bran will typically do, and Bran does a good job. So, uh, okay, good. That, that was... Any other questions here? What else did I miss here before I sort of wind this down and do my little post-show uh, thing here? One sec here. Let me, one sec, let me scroll up. Sparty, what do I do if I'm not doing enough DPS or that it calls it out and I ask what I'm doing wrong so I can correct it? And they yell at me, kick me, and whisper me, saying I stuck to the game. They're... Like, this is why you don't give 12-year-olds leadership positions. Nightmare, that is not on you. That is being with terrible leaders. Okay? If they're like, they're just being bullies. Like, fuck these kids. Listen, you anonymous little lizard shits. They're just being kids. Right? Like, they don't know how to lead people. They have zero maturity, zero leadership experience. And they're not really learning from anything either. Um... So, and, and, and that's, you know, that's problem too, right? Like, you're a teen nightmare, and then you don't want to talk to Mumble or, or TeamSpeak because they're calling you out. But these are other little shits. Like, just, just don't, 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 like, there's so many of them on the Warcraft forums or MMO, just the cesspool, right? You have to avoid these people as much as you can. And really surround yourself with people that are going to build you up. Um, just, just don't, like, ignore them. They're just full of shit. I will tell you right now, Nightmare, they're completely full of shit. Right, like, when I tease you guys... Uh, you know, when I criticize, uh, I will say something like, I'm trying to think here for the good one. Like, you know, you guys move out of fire like old people fuck. You know, really slowly, like, oh, I'm going to run out of that. No, just get the hell out of the fire, right? It's criticizing. It's not really demeaning. It's, it's funny, which is, you know, my sort of style, right? It's going to tease you a little bit, right? Um, or if you die to something, I will ask, you know, what did you do there, Nightmare? And you'll be like, oh, I was tunneling the boss, and I didn't, didn't see the fire. I'm like, okay. And I will do that out loud in front of everybody. And that way, like, I know that you won't repeat it. You've learned from that mistake. I've driven that point right, across, like, clear across, Nightmare Room, to you. Right? You you know you won't repeat it, because I know that relating style is effective for you. So, anyway, uh, that's a good one. People don't fuck, that means I was never in fire, whatever. Um... What else did I miss here? What, keep going? I can keep going here. But I, I do want to go through uh, a motivational speech that I gave to my raiders recently that a lot of you guys missed because I didn't mute my stream. But I'll give you a variation of that speech. Um, feel free to use whatever you want from it. Uh, thanks for the detailed thing. Any other questions here? I've, I've done this thing. Do you, have any, do you guys have any other questions about raid leading? Um, issues you guys have had? 
recently in the past with your raid leaders, guild leaders, whatever, uh, either as a raid leader or as somebody that has a good or bad raid leader, things you guys want to add, let me know. Just uh, hit the at Sparty Smallwood thing so I can see it. That's fantastic. And now you're timed out, you video. Uh, it takes time to tell us how much our EPs don't make. Like, I, I, nobody gives a shit with your EPs, guys. Nobody cares. Here, here's my Ashbringer. Enjoy. There. Uh, actually, if it's someone that's like authoritative, I get scared. I try my hardest not to do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're, you, tr you try your hardest, right? Like, you're still young, though. Listen, you're still young. It's okay. Tell shitters to get good or kick them? What? Uh, okay, here's a good question. Yeah, I, I, sort of, I should have mentioned this. Um, Karn Molita on ZH. So, great question there from Karn Molita. Uh, how much should a raid leader actually call out during a raid? Now, that varies between your guild. It varies between every single guild. Um, we have VEM, for example. VEM, for those of you that you know know what it is, it's a DBM. Both all the all the abilities are are voice enhanced. So you, it tells you, you know, don't stand in fire. You know, it says you know this ability is coming next. Um, that has taken place a lot of the uh, in place of a lot of the raid leading that I do. I don't call as much out. That being said, though, vocal cues and vocal commands are the most effective way of leading your raiders. Right? Say, so tell them, you know, we've got an essence spawning in five seconds. We have, you know, get ready to stack in for allure. Stack tightly on me. St stack tight like boy Zanus, not, not like, least, like, loose like sleeve of wizard, right? Stack tightly. Um, what else? You know, it's just communicate well. How much raid leading? Again, it depends on your group. Um, some raiders, like if you've done an attempt 500 times, you're not going to be doing much raid leading. People know exactly what to do because it's the same muscle memory every single time. Uh, here's a good question. Uh, is there so one sec? Is there any decent method for calling out people for performing badly or messing up mechanics too much? Is it better to whisper them in private or bring it up in front of a raid to prevent further mistakes? Great question. Very good question. Now it depends on the person. If it's something that your raid can learn from, and this question is from. Um, Yakumo Dragon, if it's something that everybody can learn from, and I gave you guys the Firemancer example earlier, um, you know, I would call him out for being out of position, because he's too far out. That is something the entire raid can learn from. If I whisper him directly, yeah, it's, it's very low-key, but everybody else will make the same mistake. So, it's not calling him out exactly, it's improving the raid. That's an example. Uh, if, you know, if I say... You know, so and so and so are doing really low DPS. It also saves you a lot of time. It saves you a ton of time in your raid by, you know, doing a group call. Now, let's listen. You know, hunters, I need you guys to pick up the damage on X, Y, and Z targets. Or mages, I need you guys to interrupt. You're calling out all the mages. Like, it's not, you're going to whisper mage number one, I need you to interrupt more. Mage number two, I need you to interrupt more. You know, hunter, I need you to do more damage on this. It takes way too much time to babysit them that much. Remember, in your raids, there's only X amount of time in a week. You're trying to be as efficient as possible with your with your raids and call out things as needed. Uh, okay, here question from Calix. I lead a weekend guild on my old server that I pretty much lets progress my main guild. Uh, what's the best way to deal with melee constantly tunnel boss and won't swap to essential ads? Spoken them about it several times, but I really don't want to remove them because they're not a bad player and wishing they just improve fast with swapping to ads. Again, raiding is a learned skill. It takes time. Um, the same top raiders make those exact same mistakes. They'll tunnel into things. They'll make mistakes. Uh, just keep keep repeating it. Guys, switch to the ads. Switch to the ads. Switch to the ads. Eventually, they will hopefully learn. Uh, and, you know, that was a good question that somebody else had here. Um, how do you, you know, how to coach when people are struggling and when to cut your losses? You know, as a raider, if you are the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. As a general, you know, life thing. Uh, again, you have X amount of hours per week. You know, let's say you raid three hours per week, or six hours per week, or nine hours per week, and some of your players are just not pulling their weight. You know what? Maybe they need more practice in heroic. Maybe they have a slower learning curve than everybody else, than everybody else in your guild, and maybe it's time to cut your losses there. Uh, at the same time, like it, it's all about respect for your guild, respect for your friends, the people that you play with. Remember, there are people behind that big computer screen. There are people behind there with feelings, with emotions, with brains. Um, treat them accordingly, right? You do have to treat them accordingly. 
but if somebody's not pulling their weight or if somebody's not doing the you know the prep work or not researching boss fights it shows a big disrespect to the rest of the group because the rest of the group is and they're slowing down everybody so you motivate them like listen i'm going to replace you unless you get your shit together right that's a good motivating um, option as well what are the questions that i have here uh, Caboose says I have to call it almost everything. So on bosses like Archimond, there are a lot of different abilities to keep track of. I delegate certain abilities to my raiders to be stressing on me. That's a great one. Um, you know, I have some of my raiders, like I have Ariana, Schomburg, um, Marksman, Drias, called certain abilities to make it a lot easier because raiding takes a huge toll on your performance. And anybody that says otherwise is full of shit. Raiding, you know, babysitting the entire raid takes a ton of your. Uh, you know, your focus elsewhere. Uh, what else here? If someone fucks up everything, I don't know what you mean by everything. Uh, thanks, a speed. Spready, what would you say that really detracts from game performance? Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, it, it totally does. Um, and to what extent is justified to cut raid leader slack and having to watch over everybody? Um, you know, for those of you that are raid leaders, here, let's get a poll here. Uh, for those of you that are raid leaders, what kind of performance, you know, healing or DPS performance, do you think you suffer percentage-wise? Like, how much more DPS or healing do you think you could do if you were not raid leading? Like, if you were not in that raid lead mindset of, you know, watching everybody, you know, where they're standing, what they're doing, looking at cooldowns, making those adjustments, uh, you know, making those decisions, how much do you think your performance would increase? Just ballpark it. 10%, 20%, 30%, you know, those are probably rough numbers of where your performance would increase if you're not focused on everything else. All right, 50 to 20 says Vernuki. Clipper says he can't do more than DPS, 20%. Yeah, and you know what? Those are, you know, we've got some like top 10 US Raiders here chiming in, 15. Yeah, you know what? I would say around 20% is probably an accurate measure, right? And when I'm raid leading, and you know, the thing is, I have a lot of backseat raid leaders like, you know, why is this healing so low? Well, there's a lot of things going on. Unless you actually put yourself into that raid leading mindset, if you're just healing, I swear to God, like, you know, some raids where I, I don't stream and I don't raid lead and I leave it all to brand, it's easy. Like, it's it's so much more effective. Like, I can become such a better healer when I'm not raid leading everybody. Um, but, so there's a rough number. 20% is roughly where your performance is going to suffer from raid leading. That's the ballpark, right? So, yeah, again, it depends on the fight. Uh, to me, it's another thing. It's more of a reaction time thing. Yeah, it is. But the thing is, you know what kills me the most? When I'm, you know, criticizing somebody else for standing in fire, and then, you know, I'm too busy about correct, too distracted correcting the raid, and then I make the mistake myself and I die. Right? That's what kills me the most. Uh, butters. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If Warcraft came out with an add on, uh, would I support it? No, I would not. A spade. What other questions do I have here? Who's hosting me now? Towley, of course, is hosting me. Okay. Uh, just in time. Just in time. Okay, one sec here. Well, happy to answer the question. I'm going to go a couple more questions here for raid leading and you before I give you guys the mythic speech that I give Towley and everybody else. Okay, I'm going to spam. Uh, why do you accept 15 year olds into your guild? Would you accept 12 year old for whatever reason? Uh, so, is that a legit question? Wow, happiness? So, again, age is more of a state of mind. Um, I, I don't give any shits about how old somebody is within a reason. The reason a lot of guilds will not accept somebody that is, you know, 14, 15, 16, there's a couple things. Uh, number one is maturity. Sometimes they do have, you know, adult subject matter. So, when Tali's talking about porn or, you know, or, or Cuban cigars, he's not actually talking about Cuban cigars, he's talking about something else. Um, you know, there's some adult subject matter and people don't want to be responsible for having a 14, 15 year old in those conversations. That's one reason. In terms of raid leading or, you know, raiding in a guild with young people, um, a lot of 14, 15, 16 year olds are not, you know, yet ready to manage their time effectively. They're not in control of their computer. Their parents might be. So your main tank's 15 years old. Great. But guess what? He didn't do his homework. So now his parents are grounding him. You've lost a main tank for two weeks, right? That's what I mean. That being said, though, I've been doing this since I was 15. I played EverQuest in 2000, right? That's, that's 15-ish. I've been doing this for a long, long time. And, you know, if you can manage your time effectively, not everybody is, you know, the same. Um, I've accepted 15, 16, 14-year-olds, 18-year-olds. I've had some really immature 35 and 40-year-olds. Like, they just verbal diarrhea and just, oh, my God. Uh, I had one... 
28 year old recently in an interview uh, asked me, you know, what, you know, guild chat topics are off limits. I'm like, well, you know, the typical ones. I tell them, I uh, don't talk about politics, religion, abortion, like any of that kind of stuff. Shouldn't has no place in guild chat, none at all, especially in my guild chat. And so he asked him, can I talk about porn? Because I really love porn. And he was 100% serious. And everybody else in the interview was cracking up. And I'm like, you can talk about whatever you want. You know, we're adults. We're, you know, we're a pretty mature group here. Uh, so there's, again, maturity to state of mind. Uh, Sparty, you're on a dead server. There was no one to recruit. And the raid as a whole does not want to transfer to keep writing. What do you do? Um, you can try to keep recruiting, right? Like, it sucks to recruit. But a lot of servers are, are joined, right? So what do you do? You try to convince them to leave. But it, again, it's it's a lot of money to, to just transfer to a different server, right? You could always just transfer, or guilt, sorry, you could always really lead with another group. That's one option as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, you know, there's plenty of 15, 16 year olds that are good players. Guys, your prime, your prime of gaming and reaction times is early 20s. As you get older, you know, post 25, your reaction times, you know, all that stuff, your metabolism, it all decreases. So when I was in my early 20s, fuck yeah, I could, you know, I could go four times in one night, you know, kill four bosses. It was awesome, right? It was, it was fantastic. Now that you get, I'm 29 now, um, your reaction times do diminish. I, I don't know how I ever played this game at, you know, how old was I? 1920, whatever. Um, so, yeah. I mean, if, yeah, if the person's mature enough to handle criticism, some kids can't handle the criticism, right? Like, some kids can't understand, uh, like, they haven't been prepped, you know? And when I call a kid out for, like, why did you stand in fire? It's like, wah, 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 mommy, he yelled at me. Well, that's, you know, not, you know, not taking criticism. Uh, I'm playing since class, right? And, Wrath is much player in the real. That's fantastic, Quanchi. That's awesome. Scorpion had a question here as well. I just I want to give you guys a speech. One sec here. Sparty, this is the last one before I, I do my speech. And I'll ask I'll add some more questions here. I got the situation in my guild. There's this old guy that plays a mage, and my guild is progressing through Hellfire Citadel normal. He was pulling it enough for himself. So one, uh, the raider called him out, being rude. As I heard later, we found out he's a mage clicker. How would you approach the situation? Would you blame Raider for being too rude towards an old guy? I, again, I, I don't give a shit. Like for me, I don't care what your age is. I will call you out just the same. Like, there's no special treatment for anybody, right? Dre doesn't get special treatment, right? And that, again, puts a lot of strain on our relationship, like I told you guys earlier, uh, that it's very, very tough to raid lead and guild lead with someone that you're very close to, because you have to have that integrity of your guild, and you have to, you know, be, you know, watch your relationship as well, because that's the most important thing, too. And at the same time, everything's very publicized, right? So, like, I, it has to happen. Anyway, uh, is it too rude to hold an old guy? Maybe, right? Like, maybe it is. But at the same time, uh, you know, you want to correct that clicking. And for those of you that don't know what clicking is, uh, you know, a really inefficient way to play is, you know, to be clicking your abilities like this, right? Because, you know, you're doing something, you're healing here, you click this, and you click your heal or whatever. It's really slow and inefficient, right? You want to educate that old dude to be keybinding. So, uh, have you ever had your parents yell at you, Sparty? Yeah, come on. Who hasn't had their parents yell at them? Come on. Okay. Uh